Thank you very much indeed, uh, Austin, and, and thank you very much uh, for inviting me to your seminar. Um, we have about an hour, I think, so uh, I'm going to talk probably for about half an hour, um, and, uh, and then we'll have some discussion. Um, I always say that I may ramble on a bit, but we'll see how we, uh, how we go, because there's quite a lot uh, which I'm keen to, to get across, and it's a real opportunity uh, and, and pleasure for me to come and see you all. I think actually I've joined a lunchtime meeting with some of you, um, so apologies to those if there's some repetition, um, but uh, hopefully we'll take that as reinforcement rather than, uh, uh, rather than anything tedious. Um, so Imperial College Health Partners, uh, there are two important things to say about the genesis of this organization, uh, because it's arisen from two different directions. First, as you know, um, you're part of a, uh, an academic health science center, the AHSC, which is the formal collaboration between the university and Imperial College Healthcare Trust, the teaching hospitals. Uh, and the purpose of that uh, joint venture, which has now been given further license for another five years, is to maximize the opportunity for research that comes out of the academia in the university and the patient base uh, that's across the teaching hospitals. Um, and I appreciate I focus on teaching hospitals, not primary care community, but that is the way that is. And of course, primary care uniquely in Northwest London is, has been part of the university. Uh, so um, there was a review of that at AHSC some while ago and uh, reached two broad conclusions. One was that the agenda of the AHSC focused as it is on research through to the point of identifying best practice uh, was, an, was an incomplete journey. Uh, and secondly, that the geography was too limited in terms of the teaching hospitals. And the conclusion was that there needed to be a wider collaboration across Northwest London, the two million people that live here, in terms of taking the agenda from finding out best practice from research into, so what do we do with that? How do we then get that into uh, every practice, every hospital, every service for the population in Northwest London? Uh, and also, how do we make sure that the benefits of that research and that collaboration uh, involve a much wider um, set of professionals and services than just the teaching hospitals? So it was agreed to establish Imperial College Health Partners, which therefore included primary care, uh, commissioners, and all NHS organizations across Northwest London. So that was one genesis. Uh, and the focus of that was on the, the completing the translation of research from the point of identifying best practice through into service. The second genesis arose out of the, uh, the financial crash, the economic uh, meltdown that happened a few years ago. And the Prime Minister uh, set up a review uh, to understand how best to um, regenerate economic growth uh, and what contribution all parts of the economy should be making to that economic growth, to the GDP of the UK. And the NHS uh, was seen as one of the key strands of that thinking, so a report was set up, some of you will have read it, Innovation, Health and Wealth came out and identified a number of ways in which the NHS uh, simply wasn't pulling its weight as a contributor to the overall economic well-being of the country. Uh, and as one of the largest organizations in the world, employer of a million people uh, and all the rest of it, it should be a huge engine for growth, repository of the, the biggest um, set of uh, coherent data. We might not think it's terribly coherent, but by comparison with most, it is the biggest set of coherent health data in the world. Should be a major engine. Uh, and one of the conclusions, recommendations that came out of that review uh, was that there needed to be a, a much greater focus and specific agency on getting the NHS to work much more cooperatively with industry to provide a much more fertile development ground for the development of innovation in products and service uh, and also a much more attractive market uh, for the, in, the uh, introduction and adoption of new technology and products. Uh, and the, a, the concept of the AHSN, therefore, was born, the Academic Health Science Network. Uh, which was charged with that uh, objective. So, of course, there was then an overlap between the objectives of Imperial College Health Partners, born out of the Academic Health Science Centre, and the Academic Health, Health Science Network movement, born out of the Prime Minister's review of economic growth. And uh, so, 
Imperial College Health Partners applied for and has been licensed to be the AHSN for Northwest London. So hence sometimes the confusion around AHSC, the centre, ICHP, the partners, and AHSN, the network. And there's all sorts of uh, <laughs> games played with those acronyms, but actually it's fairly straightforward. Uh, AHSC, driving research at the middle. So here we are, and I just want to run through where we've got to in terms of the developing agenda uh, of Imperial College Health Partners, which has really only been going for less than, less than a year, so it has quite a lot to do in the middle of an organization, uh, of course, which is still settling down following the huge reorganization that we've all um, enjoyed in the last uh, year or so. Uh, so um, the organization brings together uh, academic and health uh, and science communities. Uh, and one of the things that our partners are looking for us to do, I suppose another aspect of the work, is to help the system respond to challenges that only individual, that individual organizations themselves can't deal with. Uh, so we know that there are challenges to Northwest London healthcare, the economy across the, the two million population, um, which if Northwick Park, if um, Central London Community Healthcare Trust, if primary care, simply seek to protect their own current existence, their own current models, their own current way of doing things, um, in competition in some way with each other, not direct, but, but virtual competition, then, then we won't solve the problems that face the whole system. So there needs to be a collaboration across organizations and uh, the only forum uh, in which that collaboration comes together without there being an overlay of commission provider, competitor, foundation trust, whatever it might be, the only is a partnership, a formal partnership. So a third arm uh, is to deliver improvements through that uh, collaboration. Uh, there's a picture just which you'll all be familiar with uh, and these slides are available. So I'm not gonna go through uh, the list of organizations, but it's right across the eight CCGs uh, that now form Northwest London. Uh, so we have distilled all that, if you like, into uh, three key strategic priorities. Uh, one is enabling and facilitating discovery of new ideas and innovation. So we're not a research body, uh, but we're absolutely interested in, in facilitating the development and adoption of those new ideas not just in research, but of course in industry as well. So how can we get industry to do some of the innovation uh, that we need to see in the system? Because one other context of this is not only the prosperity uh, of uh, the UK, but the fundamental challenge of um, all healthcare systems that we're facing at the moment. So again, as you know, since its inception, the NHS has seen real terms growth obviously in various peaks and troughs, but nonetheless, real terms growth of about 4% per annum uh, throughout its 80, 60 year history, whatever it is, 60 year history. Uh, and as we know, medical inflation has always run ahead of general inflation, and that continues to be the case. In the last 10 years, the government undertook a major experiment uh, based on a, 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 a political turning point, really, in the 1990s, which was either the NHS was going to never live up to its original purpose of being the main provider of healthcare in this country, or it needed significantly more investment to help it do so. And over the last 10 years, we've seen a massive increase uh, in the proportion of GDP that goes into the NHS. Uh, so increasing from around 6, 6.5% uh, to currently around 9.5%, 10% of GDP. Massive investment. And of course, we've seen significant benefits as a result. Waiting times come down, all sorts of things have changed. That's all very well why the economy was growing, but actually don't forget that the UK's GDP this year is smaller than it was in 2009 because of the recession. So although the percentage has gone up actually for several reasons, that, that increase in spending has come to a grinding halt. And of course, as we know, public sector spending is now capped, and even though the NHS is protected by that, uh, we will still see a very different scenario going forward than we have in the past decades, which is no real terms growth or very little real terms growth. Medical inflation, of course, and we'll have all sorts of arguments about whether that is or isn't due to aging or what it might be, but nonetheless, medical inflation, medical demand continues to grow. So another fundamental challenge to the NHS is how does it change itself now 
to live within a, a maintained budget. There's lots of people talking about savings and cost reductions and all the rest of it. But the NHS is not going to see in real terms a reduction in money it has. But what it will do is have to make that money stretch further. That's a very positive and challenging agenda, not a negative one, unfortunately, which we sometimes talk about. So what, how can we as a system make the significant resources that we have stretch further and meet the increasing levels of demand? So new ideas and innovations are absolutely seen as key to that, transformation across the system. Variation and spread best practice across healthcare, one of the biggest frustrations for industry, for innovators, for researchers in the system, is the degree to which um, things take so long to translate across, um, across practice from, re from identified best, re best, best research. Average current estimates are around 17 years. Uh, and strengthening synergy between the NHS and industry, which I've mentioned. Uh, we've created a, uh, just a context for that. So the parameters I've talked about, enabling discovery, adopting best practice, creating wealth, uh, form, if you like, the the ground on which we work and we've got 10 in fact now 11 <coughs> projects to work with now one thing to recognize about the partnership uh, is that uh, we've been set up as an agent for change we have got some central funding uh, and we have got some funding in terms of uh, our partner contributions locally so every CCG every provider is making a contribution to the partnership um, that amounts to, at the moment, around £5 million a year. Uh, in the context of the budget for North West London in health, which is £3.4 billion a year. Um, now, the partnership is not a separate organisation, uh, if you like. So there isn't some little group over here that is the partnership going to do all the work and everyone else sort of watches and cheers them on. The partnership is every organization and every member of the organization in the system. And that's something that's going to take a long while to develop culturally, if you like. Um, but actually, discretionary spend of £5 million is a very significant amount of discretionary spend. Even in massive multinational organizations, uh, um, which some of us have worked in, you actually don't often uh, find a discretionary budget of, uh, of significant size of that sort. So it's, that there is enough in there to make, um, uh, to make real potential. Uh, for the creation of, uh, uh, of Agent for Change. Nonetheless, it means that there is a limited amount that can be done, and we're picking several uh, projects, and I want to just go through those and pick out some of the highlights. Broadly, they fall into two groups. One is, if you like, a more traditional uh, uh, approach in reviewing uh, some clinical pathways of care. Of course, we have all the issues around uh, the fact that so many people uh, have several pathways of care going on with their multipathologies, but pathways of care and I'm, I'm a little little wary of pathways of care as, as a model uh, and then some generic uh, some generic uh, projects that are going on and I just want to pick out some highlights so starting with some of the um, uh, the clinical areas chronic obstructive uh, pulmonary disease um, as we know a uh, number of points have been made what we've what we've undertaken is a um, very quick uh, strategic review of where we have got to uh, with COPD in the system. The CLARC, the Collaboration for Learning and Applied Research Health and Care in this system, uh, has done a lot of work uh, on COPD acute exacerbations uh, at the point of admission to hospital. So we've uh, pulled out um, some interesting points uh, of debate around COPD because the focus to date has been what is happening with acute exacerbation in acute hospitals. That is not where the action is for COPD. The real issue is the 25,000 people across northwest London registered with COPD and up to half that number again probably not registered with COPD but suffering from it. Um, the fact that there is a completely wide variation of access to fundamental things which we know make a difference to patients with COPD, pulmonary rehabilitation, education on the use of medicines, uh, flu vaccination, smoking cessation. And we know that some services are provided in places which are inaccessible to the concentrations of populations with COPD. We can look at Cochrane reviews, which were done in 2002, that set out simply what good practice should be for COPD. And we can look across Northwest London and say that's not happening. So one of, the, I suppose, the frustra early frustrations and learnings for me here at the moment is we're being set up to look at introducing new things and new innovations to the NHS. One of the first areas we're looking at we're not even doing the old things 
for COPD, never mind anything new. Now, there will be new stuff to do as well, but already 10 year, 10 year um, out of, not out of date, but 10 year old fundamental recommendations uh, are not being implemented and we've got a wide variation in access to this, um, to this condition. So um, we need to take a system approach to that and we will be doing so. Cardiovascular rehabilitation, everyone, uh, fascinating uh, issue this. Uh, there's been a pilot on uh, multidisciplinary family-based rehabilitation for cardiovascular uh, health being done in Westminster for the past year or so. The national strategy for cardiovascular disease is very much uh, based on the sort of model that's being applied. There will be huge resistance. There is already a great political debate going on about cardio, uh, cardiovascular um, uh, rehabilitation um, between the current hospital-based models that we see and this approach, which combines a community-based approach that will address both high-risk individuals identified by general practitioners and also post-major event patients uh, that come out of hospital. It will require a change in the way we do things and it will require us to, uh, to deal with some vested interests in the current model of care. We see that all of the time. So that's really interesting and that research has all been led from uh, Imperial by Professor David Wood and his colleagues. A um, couple of other areas. Cancer, there is already uh, a, uh, a London Cancer uh, Alliance which covers South London and uh, North West London. We will be supporting the work that they're doing which is cross-organisational uh, reviews of current models of care against uh, best practice models of care. And there is a whole raft of work that's going on which will continue to support. A mental health, of course, uh, is one of the biggest, um, uh, biggest challenges in terms of morbidity and effects on uh, health and uh, well-being in the community, and uh, we have to give it uh, the attention that it needs. Whether, uh, as we know, it's the problem of uh, physical health in patients with mental illness, giving rise to a much earlier mortality amongst patients with mental illness than one sees in their mentally well counterparts, or whether it's the very high effect that we see from mental illness on patients with physical illness, their admission to hospital, uh, or the uh, expression of their mental illness as part of the syndrome that they get in hospital and not being properly assessed. And we know there's a whole raft of issues uh, that go across that. Um, one of the things that I've uh, uh, observed and, and have been concerned about coming into this role and, and into this area is, is the extent to which actually we don't have um, the population-wide clear picture of what actually are the levels of demand and need and how well are the services responding to those levels of demand and need across uh, northwest London. We have bits of both pictures. Um, there's a great deal of population epidemiology around. In other respects, there's a great deal of health information around. But we, we don't have a really clear view of that. And what we do see is quite a lot of separate initiatives that are undertaken without that proper strategic concept that's context that says what actually are the most important areas that we should be focusing on and how do they knit together uh, in, in some overall strategy. So we're working with um, the National uh, Mental Health Sard, uh, Geraldine Strathy and others on how we can use Northwest London to create a, a model for how we would approach such a complex issue uh, in a rather more... Uh, strategic fashion. So uh, we're then looking at um, uh, some uh, uh, generic, if you like, uh, issues which are not so much uh, condition-based. Uh, uh, research, fundamental to what we do, uh, and interestingly what we've done is brought together uh, across the system for the first time uh, and established a joint group uh, which brings the BRUs, the BRCs, CLRN, um, uh, public health, uh, and others uh, into a uh, system-wide um, research uh, governing body or, or steering group. Um, and already some interesting things are, are coming out of that. One of them, incidentally, is, and I was quite surprised at this, despite inevitably that group is to some extent dominated by uh, specialty research interests uh, in the tertiary-based BRCs and BRUs, Nonetheless, the very first statement that that committee made was that we need to give a key focus 
uh, to research in primary care uh, and research in mental health across northwest London because in those areas uh, we have significant ground to catch up to make uh, research in those areas as good as the research that goes on in uh, secondary and tertiary care uh, settings and there's a real commitment to working with Ricky, with Azim, with you uh, in terms of uh, the primary based uh, research network and how we can give much greater focus and support uh, to primary care based research uh, across the system. There are several other uh, bits of work that are going uh, on with that, uh, particularly around uh, the streamlining uh, of research programs in order to make the research here in Northwest London much more accessible uh, to commercial based research uh, as well as to non commercial uh, research. And, and we do extremely well on the non commercial research. We need to do uh, more in terms of the commercial based uh, research than we do. Patient safety. Um, we are going to see uh, later this year a national initiative around patient safety collaboratives built on uh, the recommendations uh, that came out of Don Berwick, uh, 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 Berwick's review, uh, and in fact uh, a key player in that has been Professor Charles Vincent who, as some of you will know, has been leading the Centre for Patient Safety and Service Quality here for the last five years. Uh, we have a real centre uh, of research excellence on patient safety in the system uh, and we are going to be w developing that into a much broader based agenda around patient safety and one which we will aim to bring away from a regulation based uh, inspectorial approach to health which is focused entirely on um, the uh, prevention of certain types of incident into uh, a, a much more uh, broadly based uh, approach uh, to safety across the system. Several, um, I suppose, uh, examples of what that looks like. Uh, one is uh, that we know at the moment uh, healthcare, healthcare is a safety critical system. Everything that goes on in healthcare, whether it's prescribing medicines, cutting people open, or whatever, whatever it might be is something which in any other sector would be considered safety critical. We don't actually operate as a safety critical system. In other words, things like minor variations, minor lapses, inadequate uh, support to uh, staff who are working uh, in those clinical settings, uh, poor environments and all the rest of it uh, are daily and in a thousand ways overcome by the professionalism and commitment of individual members of staff uh, and the system relies on that. Uh, that should not be the case and because we allow minor variations, and when I say minor variations I mean things like um, pharmacists not being able to turn up for the ward round because of being committed somewhere, so the war somewhere else so the ward round goes ahead without the pharmacy input or the wrong surgical pack turns up in theatre but the surgeon continues anyway because you know one um, a set of forceps is almost as good as another for this procedure. That sort of thing goes on all the time and shouldn't, shouldn't happen. What it means is that in the system, individual people, particularly who are relatively new, relatively newly promoted, or whatever else, find it very difficult to distinguish between what is reasonable and acceptable variation and what is not. Uh, and in any system which is safety critical, we would have a much greater rigour around either, things are, either everything is right and as planned or things stop until they are. And interestingly enough, in some parts of the NHS, we see, we see that working very well. So some of the most critical areas, intensive care, uh, NICUs, uh, are actually places where one, where one does see that sort of approach and actually things are rather, uh, rather calmer and more orderly than in, than in other places where one doesn't have that philosophy uh, and uh, culture. So, there are a whole range of things around patient safety which then stretch from how consistent are we about what exactly are the priorities uh, for members of staff in various organizations? Uh, what, are the, what is the clarity of messaging that goes on? Uh, why do we tell our cohorts of junior doctors different things every time they change ward or hospital every three months? A range of issues which need to be addressed. So that's a big, big agenda. Whole systems integration, building on the integrated care pilots which the department here have been heavily involved with and that is the next phase of work uh, for the system as a whole uh, and we'll be commissioning and discussing evaluation of that and also uh, how we play a role in bringing examples of international best practice into northwest London 
so that we don't just rely on one uh, filter uh, and one uh, interpretation of what that might look like. Collaboration with industry, uh, a fundamental tenet of what we do, but here's an interesting area of work. Because um, what the NHS has traditionally done uh, in this regard is, and to some extent it's still happening, uh, is um, to put a bunch of people in the room at the Department of Health with a bunch of people from industry to decide what kind of looks like a good innovation and then send out edicts to say, here's the latest good thing and actually it looks really good so we all ought to adopt it. And, and that just doesn't work. Um, that, that doesn't, that doesn't uh, manage uh, to bridge this, the, the barriers that there are between invention and adoption. Um, in discussion with nursing clinical directors, medical directors and others, um, we've established that there's a, there's a much greater um, uh, need for uh, understanding wh where actually are the key need uh, for an innovation either in service or product which would actually have an impact on the way things are being done and how do we how do we commission against those key needs and priorities uh, and we've started to do that with some early brainstorm type uh, pilot uh, and come up with some really interesting things in which clinicians in one place are saying we want X or Y industry in the other place saying well we've got the answer to that but we've never been able to sell it into the NHS and the third point of the triangle is NHS procurement which has never linked those two things properly together so we're setting up for Northwest London uh, a uh, an approach which will start to facilitate that dialogue uh, much more uh, much more clearly data uh, is a, a fascinating issue at the moment and, and Michael Soljak and others are, are really heavily involved in the debate uh, around use of data and you'll have all seen the national uh, debate about this but in Northwest London there is a real opportunity uh, that arises out of the work actually that's gone on with the ICP uh, to pilot if you like and demonstrate the way in which uh, data can be uh, brought together from all sorts of data feed areas, primary care, secondary care, emergency care, the, all the rest, linked together in a database which has been created actually by the CSU uh, and used for uh, a much more in-depth and much more live service evaluation, clinical research, uh, etc. by uh, linking data around individuals, obviously dealing with the issues of anonymization, pseudonymization, etc. Uh, actually, we think that the... Um, uh, that uh, function in Northwest London is well ahead uh, of the national discussion about care.data uh, and other things. And already we're seeing the applications for uh, the intelligent use of such data back in some of the clinical areas that we've been talking about. Cohort the 25,000 people with COPD, for example, what happens to them as they go through the system? One of the biggest frustrations for general practitioners is they never know what's happened when they refer a patient off into the system they never get the information back. So using data uh, to help deal with that will, is, a, is a really significant opportunity. And working with um, Azim and the team, and several of you no doubt, uh, we'll be exploring how we can make maximum use uh, of, uh, uh, of that opportunity. There is interest uh, from overseas in what Northwest London can do to provide um, advice, services, um, uh, strategic uh, direction to developing health systems in other countries uh, and the UK government is keen to promote that and we will uh, see uh, how that develops. Uh, I shan't be going through all of that but there's on the slides uh, some people and names and numbers that you can contact to discuss. Um, so that's a broad sweep of some of the areas uh, we're looking at. Uh, there are some other uh, issues which, which are starting to come up all the time. Uh, we've been asked to uh, get involved in discussions around uh, neurorehabilitation across the system. Uh, there's uh, several initiatives coming from several academic units, one around uh, telehealth and patient information, for example. Um, I think one of the challenges for us uh, is going to be now to ensure that we do actually and can actually show how the system can respond and make a difference in these areas um, and balance that ambition <coughs> with increasing demands that we will get for investment of time, energy and money 
in other things as well. So one of the, one of the tricks we're going to have to work with now is how we, how we balance uh, quite a high level of expectation uh, around uh, an already crowded agenda and ensure that we remain focused on delivering uh, against uh, this profile of work um, uh, before getting drawn into other areas without being seen as unhelpful and negative across the system by saying no to a few things. So that will be, that will be an interesting challenge. So that's a, an overview of where we are and, and what we're doing. Uh, I hope that's of interest uh, and glad to discuss any aspects of all of that. Thank you very much. <coughs>